Oh. <laughs> Woke up this morning and I pray to the most high. The sun is shining so bright. I'm blessed to live this life. Welcome to the Help Me Hangout. Because this is where the Help Me Hangout. Hey, welcome to the Help Me Hangout. Nails by Lily. Hmm. Y'all can see. Nails by Lily. You can't see. (laughs) Y'all, we had a a very successful uh, last episode. But like that episode kind of got down to that. Snaps. To the heart and to the root of things. You know, Indeed. if you didn't see that episode, make sure you go check out that episode first before you watch that because this is kind of like a part two. You know? Lily, you look so pretty. Oh, thank you. You look beautiful too. Okay, hair. Hair by Iberia. <laughs> you did do your own hair. Shoot, I don't know how to do hair. My I'm sister did mine. So, you know. But come on, y'all, for real. Um, go check out that last episode if y'all didn't uh, get a chance to yet. It's very, I think it's very important to do things decently and in order, and in order to kind of vibe with this, you know, what we got to talk vibe about. You know. But yeah, did you want to start off? Wow. That was like, uh, you see <laughs> Family Guy, that was like Quagmire when he be like, um so like the sister said go make sure you check out the last episode because all of our episodes they flow through the spirit like in order to you know kind of vibe out with this one you got to watch the previous one all of our episodes it's kind of like watching the tv show you got to watch the other first episode to know what the next episode gonna be about right because if not you're gonna be lost be lost no no we're talking about so go catch up you're new all praise to most high welcome but you have to go catch up and watch those previous episodes but today we're going to be talking about you know coping mechanism coping mechanisms <clears throat> and Ooh, substance- don't say that word <laughs> <laughs> and substance abuse um because the last call we talked about mental health and it, it flows into this because a lot of times you know our community, we struggle with spirits of depression, anxiety, and things like that, you know, mood swing disorders. And a lot of times we turn to coping, mechani- cope- coping mechanisms <laughs> that are not that much. You don't say that word. <laughs> you don't miss that, that word? Why do you want to say that word? No, I was joking. I was joking. I was joking. Oh. Okay. <laughs> A lot of times we turn to coping mechanisms that are toxic. I keep mispronouncing it. Y'all gonna have to just deal with it. That are toxic for us. It's not good for us. Um, so we're just gonna talk about that. Lord willing, we can some we can touch on some ways that are healthy, like some healthy coping mechanisms. Um, and yeah, <laughs> no mechanism. Mecha, 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 yes. mecha, was on isms, the isms. Yeah, I don't know what that is. But, oh, okay. Oh, do you want to, uh, let me see right quick, let me see, let me see, let me see. Because y'all, I feel like, honestly, sometimes, I know in the world, you know, we can turn to so many different things, and when we turn to anything other than the most high, it kind of, like, actually adds spirits onto us, and it adds, Mm -hmm. um, it adds more to our problem. We kind of make it worse than what it actually really is, instead of, Mm-hmm. Getting down to the root of it, identifying it, and going about it, you know, the way that we should. Um, I know people turn to alcohol, so you could, you know, have alcohol uh, problems or abuse. Um, also, weed. I know um, that's very popular in our community that a lot of people smoke weed. A lot of people feel like, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and roll up so I can you know, get this high, I don't have to feel anything. And a lot of these things, it make us feel numb to what we going through. But after you come down off that high, then I mean, like your problems are still there. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Yep, it's called a quick fix. 
Yeah, and you're not really treating the problem. You're not really getting to the root of the cause. You're not really solving anything. And a lot of it, uh, you know, comes from us wanting to bury certain things or it also comes from us being kind of in denial, you know, kind of like you don't want to deal with it. So I know for me, a lot of the times I would, you know, just be like, you know, this not happening or, you know, Mm -hmm. you just kind of, like I said, be in denial, which is not really healthy. I don't, I don't think it's healthy. So you do turn to these different ways to cope. Kind of burning up a little bit over there. It might be my connection, though. Con. So um, what I wanted to do really quick before we go a little bit further I just looked up the definition of like coping mechanisms or coping. So coping is strategies used during the confrontation with someone. So like with some events to reduce unpleasant emotions. So we do these certain things in order for us not to have to truly face what we're going through or face um, exactly the problems or issues that we're having. But a lot of the times when we go through certain things, we really have to understand that, you know, the one, the most high thought it fit for us to go through these things. Two, these things are making us better women um, who, well, I would say closer to what the most high designed us to be. You get what I'm saying? So when we turn to these different coping mechanisms, alcohol, weed, sex, whatever, you know, fornication, or, you know, just being on social media all day or uh, not really getting to what the problem is, those things push us further away from who the most high de- truly designed us to be. That's just how I feel about it. <clears throat> Con, beautiful point you're bringing out. And like the sister said, um, honestly, when you think about it, when we go through these different things, like the sister said, there to help us grow and learn. And what the Lord, what he wants us to do, he wants us to turn to him so that he may heal us. Um, I know, remember, I did a live like, like a year ago and basically was going until, you know, we have to come back to the most high so he can heal us because we're sick and brokenhearted. You know, we've we've been in the world and been in darkness and, you know, we've been through trauma and things that PTSD. We've been through all these different types of things. We've turned to weed and sex and drugs, but we're still not okay because all those things just temporary fix. You just constantly pushing it down you're not facing the issue and we we what's well, so like the lord wants us to turn to him so that he may heal us because only the most high in his words life are able to heal us and i want to get a precept this is sister? wisdom of solomon 16 and 12 for it was neither herb nor modifying plaster that restored them to health but thy word O lord which healeth all things so the most high he has the power to heal us with his words of life and his spirit. So we have to turn to the most high and stop turning to these temporary fixes. But a lot of times we turn to those things because it feel good in the moment. And like the sister said, we'd be in denial. When you be high, you be drunk, and you be, you kind of be in like a, it'd be a demon on you. It'd be a demon on you. You'd be in a whole nother world. And you don't be remembering, you don't be worried about none of that. But as soon as that high come down, you back feeling the same. If not worse, if not worse. I can't remember. It's kind of like, when we was doing that sugar fast and we was reading that that sugar book and she was talking about how when you eat all that sugar, you know, you feel good, you're on that sugar rush and then it comes down and, and you're just worse. Uh, like the sister said, sister said, when you turn into these coping, mechanic, coping mechanisms, it's just bringing more spirits on you. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, last night, y'all, I don't know why, I have this thing where I just, I go and I, when I feel like, cause I, okay, so for me right now, I just been struggling. I, I feel like I've been struggling with my weight. Transparent moment, okay, sisters. I've been struggling with my weight. I feel like I gained so an substantial amount of weight, okay? And I'm like, listen, I need to lose weight. I've been trying to exercise. I've been trying to eat right. I just like, I don't know what is going on. So I watch my 600 pound wife. I be watching that show. Y'all, it's some of the stuff that they talk about on there. I be feeling like I can relate to that. Like I turn to food as my comfort. Like when it's something that I don't 
want to deal with or I'm in my emotions about certain things. I feel like I be, t- I be, t- I turn the food. It's cool. It's so good. But you can't, like, <laughs> I just want to say your face is real slim. <laughs> that matters. Oh, oh, thank you. Listen, I'm trying, y'all. For real, I'm trying. I'm trying to get up and work out. You know, we be doing the grow with Joe. You know, we, up, we do our, um, I, I work out and stuff like that. And I really do try. I try different diets or I'll say different habits of eating do try, or y'all. different eating styles. You know, all the time I try to do different things just to switch it up and see what works and what doesn't work. But one thing I just realized by watching my 600 pound life, like you cannot turn to all these outside sources. And there was this one episode with a lady. She asked the man, you know, basically, do you believe in the most high? And he was saying... You know, when you turn, okay, the Most High is not going to reward you for doing stuff that is basically bad. So he was saying by her turning to this food and not treating her body and her temple right, the Most High is not just going to miraculously heal her or fix her from her ailment that she has. Is she kind of has to put the work in mm-hmm. in order to see the change. The Most High is not just going to I don't know, just give her a quick fix. Most I know so, genie. Exactly. So I was like, I started thinking like, dang, I kind of got to stick with this. You know, I've been trying to eat better. I've been working out. I just got to kind of stick with it. And it's the same thing when we're going through certain things. You just got to stick to, it may not seem like in the moment that these things are working, but you got to stick to it. Okay, I'm, I'm doing my self-reflection. Okay, I'm t- I, I have my one counselor among a thousand. Okay, I these are the things that's going to help you have a a, a routine that's going to help you endure because if you soon as you break that routine or you break whatever it is the flow that you got going on that gives satan that that small chance to get back in there to be like girl you need to go have you need to go have some hard drink you need to go have you know a glass of wine you need to go smoke that blunt you need to go you know, go go ahead and, and fornicate and, and be with whoever you want or you know what I mean? So I feel like as long as we have that routine and the most high bit. is at the foundation. Oh. I was saying as long as you have the the most high at the foundation of whatever that routine is, as far as you turning to him to, to help you with the things that you're struggling with, Lord willing it's gonna be successful if he see it fit. So um. I wanted to bring this out. Um, this is Sirach chapter 30, verse 23. And it says, um, I'm going to start at 22. The gladness of the heart is the life of man, and the joyfulness of a man prolongs his days. Love thine own soul and comfort thy heart. Remove sorrow far from thee, for sorrow hath killed many, and there is no pocket therein. And the sister brought up mighty points, but also I always say to sisters, you know, what do you like to do? Now, of course, we always want to turn to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, because the most, he's the healer of all, you know, he's going to heal us. But like the sister, you got to put in that work, you know, you just got to continue to endure it because the most is not going to heal us overnight. Things take time. But I ask sisters, what do you like to do? Because you want to kind of comfort your own soul in this thing. It's not mm-hmm. off to comfort yourself. So. I'll be asking, I'll be telling sisters to find things that relieves your, like that brings you peace, that are, that, that relieves your stress through the spirit. Of course, outside of, you know, after you turn to the most high, you pray, you've done your self-reflection, you know, continue to fast. Like the sisters, have a routine. What are things that you like to do? Do you like to sew, color, you like to doodle, maybe you like to go on walks, you know, maybe you like to um, paint, crochet, embroider, you want to make zits, um, you want to dance, you want to go rock climbing. Man, there's so many things you can do out here in righteousness to help you feel better, to calm you down, to relieve stress. So find those things that you like to do and comfort your own soul through the spirit. Those are all healthy coping mechanisms. But this smoking and this drinking and this having sex is literally just a quick fix. And you're going to come down off that high. You're going to feel even worse. You're going to feel even worse. God, that sounds And like then we're uh, eating. So you indulge. I'm so lucky. I was saying, um, and then when you hire, you be overeating. So now you got a whole nother demon on you. Gluttonous. Mm-hmm. But now I was about to say, um, that comes with also filling your time and not being idle. Um, mm-hmm. 
it's a million other things that you could be doing. But if you you are just my grandmother always used to say, an idle mind is the devil's playground or the devil's workshop. You know, when you fill your time in, your, in yourself with the things that are well-pleasing unto the Lord, you know, it kind of allows for no space for Satan to get in because you are filling, you, you filling your time with things that are in righteousness. You know what I mean? Um, and I think that's where a lot of substance abuse can come in by people having idle time and not knowing what to do with it. Now you addicted to scrolling on Twitter. Now you're addicted to scrolling on TikTok. Now, instead of, you know, you going here and, and, and uplifting yourself through the spirit, you just spent seven hours on TikTok. That's a whole work shift. That's a long time. <laughs> That's a long time. To be you said a work shift. I'm crying. Nah, for that real. Is. Eight hours. Eight. Listen. Eight, ten, twelve listen, hours. I get vexed when I'm on my phone too much. Like my spirit will literally get vexed. Like mm -hmm. I will get irritated and get vexed when my phone has been in my hand too much. My eyes will start hurting. My eyes and my hands, and I already work with my eyes. You know, work with my hands and stuff I like see that. My eyes be hurting. <clears throat> Um, hold on. Oh, let me read this precept while you're looking for that. Okay. This Ephesians chapter 5 and uh, 17, it says, Where ye be ye not un so like wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is, and be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the spirit. So that goes into not being drunk with different, you know, philosophies or anything, you know, uh, being too much on your phone, being, drinking too much, smoking, whatever, not, not giving yourself over to the, the worldly pleasures, but being filled through the spirit. You know, things that's going to uplift your spirit, not bring you down. Because them things are downers. They're not, you know, things that uplift you. I don't feel like it is. So. Not giving it to mm -hmm. your own, your own desires. Walking blamelessly. Con, I always like to, girl, I don't even know at this point. I was, I had articles put up, you know, like you know, mental health and um, coping mechanisms. And I don't know. I'm just not feeling it anymore. <laughs> Why? I don't know. You never know. It could, it could help. But I feel like um, I kind of do want to touch on what you was talking about. That was really good. I feel like um, figuring out what you like. Sit down, write those mm -hmm. things out. Figure right. out what you do like. Figure out those things that are that does bring you peace. You know, even if you gotta sit down. Listen, I was, I forgot what I was watching. I think I was watching um a sister on YouTube. She's like a um. <laughs> so lucky, That's our prayer, <laughs> Chief uh, Owl. Chief Owl. <laughs> Chief Owl of prayer. But I um. I feel like, uh, oh no, I was watching a sister on YouTube. She was, uh, I think she's a vegan, vegetarian, something. But she was saying like, you know, we have this thing where we always have to be doing something. It's nothing wrong with sitting in silence. Okay. It's nothing wrong with, it. like, I feel like sometimes we feel like we always have to be doing something. Mm -hmm. You don't always mm -hmm. have to be doing something. You can sit in quiet and in you know, it could be meditating if you are doing something. You can sit in silence sometimes. And I think the next day, I just wrote, everywhere I went to, I just rode in my car in silence. Just to see how it was. Now, we do get weird. It do get awkward. But that. then when you, you start being like, you know what? I'm filling my time with stuff that, you know, is peaceful. That brings me peace. That is not... Um, over overloading my spirit, overwhelming my spirit, overstimulating my spirit. You know what I mean? Um, have a spa day. I think I 
I did a post on our page on Help Me Sing Out on different ways to take care of, you know, your, your mental health, mental wellness. Have a have a spa day at home. Have a day where, you know, if you don't want to go, to, if you can't go to the nail salon, Dollar Tree has polish. They got a top coat, base coat, clear, okay, and colors, okay? Do your toes. They have foot soap in there. You can mm-hmm. make yourself a little foot bath. Um, give yourself a facial. Shoot, go buy yourself a daggone candle. Light a candle in the house and, you know. And also, I'll say look at your surroundings. Do you need to clean up? You know, those things might affect but, how, how your mood is as well. Say it against this. I think her, I think it's kind of breaking up. Maybe breaking I, up. I can't hear you. But Lord willing, y'all can hear me. So yeah, fill your time with stuff that is, you know, things that, that bring you peace. Take yourself out on a lunch date, you know. Um, let me see if I can go back to the post. It's on our page, on our Instagram page. Can you hear me now? Con, is it better? Um, con, you just say it. Um, but Con, figure out what you like to do. Um, yeah. I know for me, I just be wore out and I work full time and I just be wore out. Like I just be so busy. So for me, I'm kind of leaning the most high and the C to be honest is like really like a healing journey, finding myself type of thing, finding things I like to do. So I'm kind of in a space where I'm just trying to enjoy where I am and not so much worry about the future and tomorrow and the next seasons that are going to come, but just enjoying where I am right now, focusing on what I'm doing right now, how I can be better with what I have right now, and just being content, you know, not worrying about things I can't control, but the things that I can, you know, the serenity prayer. Um, but something else that the most I put in my spirit is just to, you know, do things that a beer likes to do, that I like to do, find those things that I like to do. And I recently, I just learned how to make Zeet. Last night, so I'll pray to the most high. Um, but just finding those things I like to do. Um, there's this app I came across called Meetup. And it's basically where you can type in things you like to do, and it's a whole bunch of groups around you. Most of it is free, but they have different stuff like rock climbing. Like it's just what like pottery. I like I'm into stuff like pottery. I'm into stuff like I want to learn how to play chess, to be honest. Like I want to learn how to play chess. And I probably sound like a like a nerd or whatever, but I don't care. Um, I want to learn how to play chess. Um, so just different stuff like that. Like just find stuff that you like to do. Everybody likes to do different stuff. So don't condemn another sister if what she's doing is not is just because you feel like it's off. You can say that as well. Everybody likes to do different stuff. We all have different healthy coping me- mechanisms through the spirit. Um, but we just have to find those things, be real with ourselves. You know, find that peace in the midst of that storm, in the midst of you healing in the midst of all hell breaking loose in your life, in the midst of going through different types of trials and tribulations, you have to find that peace. Because true peace is knowing how to be at peace even when the storm comes. Of course, Yahweh Shemashah is our peace, you know, our comfort and our strength. The second Thessalonians 3 and 16, you know, the most high is our peace, our strength, Psalms 28 and 7. But at the same time, um, you also have to cleave onto that peace during the tribulations, during the pain. You know, don't turn to things that's not going to help you, not going to profit you, not going to benefit you, not going to help you be better. So find those things you like to do. Write it down. Self-examine. It's not off. I actually don't see it enough in Israel. I do not see it enough. Don't be unrighteous. Um, so I sent you a link, but I wanted to read this real quick. Um, This is from Psychology Today, and it's basically talking about coping mechanisms. Um, And they were just saying how coping mechanisms are basically like a form of being having an addiction. Um, It says we tend to use a coping mechanism as a distraction, a crutch that we lean on as a way of avoiding stress. These activities then are no longer true choices that we make, but rather unconscious habits that often prevent us from dealing directly with stress and are therefore harmful to our well-being. 
And the one thing that kind of stuck out to me is that it says that we use these coping mechanisms as our crutch, but we really should be leaning on the most high, Mm. you know? And I think that's really important because whatever we give our strength to, that is what we're worshiping. That is what we're, uh, what basically we are yielding to. And it's so many precepts that tell us how to, that one, it's, it should be nothing before the most high. No other, we shouldn't have no idols before the most high. We shouldn't uh-huh. have anything, no other gods before the most high. And when you lean on these things, you're making these things your gods. But we have to keep our body in subjection. We have to keep yeah. our mind in subjection. We have to keep our thoughts in subjection. We have to, you know, strive into the end. You know, and and not allow these things to become our crutch, our foundation, because then whatever we make our foundation, that is what, you know, that's what our our path looks like. Mm. It's either life or you're going to choose death. So Mm. the most high or you're going to choose the weed. Which one are you going to choose? Come. Mm, that is the spirit. That is the spirit. I just did an exhortation on that today. The sister, um, scripture was Susanna. She dropped a video last night, a Sabbath video, very mighty sister called Are You Putting Old Wine into New Bottles? And so, my exhortation was basically going into my precept was Matthew 6 and 24. And let me get that. That's the spirit. Lily just made me think about that. Matthew 6 and 24. Hold on, let me get it. Hold on, let me get it. Hey, hold on, let me get it. Um, no man can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve your how and mammon. So you can't serve your flesh. You're either going to serve your how about your mouth. You're going to be a servant to your flesh. You're either going to be a servant to sin. You're going to be a servant to righteousness. You got to pick and choose. You can't be doing both. You can't be saying you're a follower of, if we say we're followers of Christ, if we say we're followers of Hamashiach, Hamashiach, if we say we want to be his servant, if we say we want to serve the most high God, either you're going to serve the most high or you're going to serve your flesh. You got to Either hang one up and stick to other. You got to hang something up. You cannot do both. You cannot do both. So you can be smoking weed and then trying to say, I believe in the most high father, the most high. You got to pick and choose what you want to do. You got to pick and choose in this thing. Um, and like the sister said, we don't want to have anything above the most high. So we're telling y'all to find these coping mechanisms, but don't make it a habit to where you turn to that before you turn to the most high God. You know, you have to turn to the most high God first because he's the only one that has the power to heal you to restore you to new you because that blunt ain't gonna heal you that that quick fix of, of getting high ain't gonna heal you that quick fix of getting drunk ain't gonna heal you having fornicating having sex ain't gonna heal you none of these things are going to heal you nothing you're going to be in a constant cycle of pain until you humble down and turn to yahweh bahashem mashem like havashah because our father is the only one that has due power to heal you to make you new to restore you sorry so i just want to say that uh precept and I think I've been bringing this precept out since we started talking about this. This is Baruch chapter 4 and verse 29. It says, For he that have brought these plagues upon you shall bring you everlasting joy with your salvation. Take a good heart, O Jerusalem, for he that gave thee that name will comfort thee. So it's, it, we're going to have times of affliction. We're going to have times when we go through things. We're going to have times where everything is not so smooth and easy and you know, but the most high is the one who brought these things upon us. You know what I mean? So the only one who can remove us, or, I mean, remove them from us is the most high. And I'm not saying that, you know, to to minimize anything. I never minimize things that, you know, we go through. But me and one of my elder sisters, he's just talking about, if this is light affliction, I don't even want to know what isn't light affliction (laughs) okay you know and it's crazy because the word has all the answers whatever you need help with even if you don't know yourself comfort yourself and be around those sisters that you know are mighty in the spirit are mighty in this word because they might have husbands that know the precepts. They might not know it all, but they might have husbands that know the precepts. And be like, hey, sis, do you think you could shoot me some precepts or something? You know, read all those things. Yeah, how was Sha fought? Um, you know, who the world ignorantly calls, you know, Jesus Christ. He fought Satan with the word. How much more us 
we have to do the same thing. You know, we have to do the same thing. And don't think, you know, he also had moments where he was like, Lord, this is a lot. He went with his brothers and he went somewhere private. He said, y'all stay right here. I'm about to go pray. When he prayed, then he cried. He said, Lord, please remove this cup from me. Only if it be of your will. You know, the last precept I, I read before I read um, Baruch in Ephesians, that was saying, be not ignorant of the Lord's will. So we can't be, okay, this is of the Lord's will. This is what I have to go through. Don't be in denial about it. Don't be like Jonah. Don't run away. Because at the end of the day, what happened to Jonah? He still had to fulfill what the Most High set out for him to do. It's going to be stuff that we don't like. It's, it might be stuff that we don't agree with. But at the end of the day, you have to humble down. And you have to submit yourself to the Lord. Because guess what? He's the only one that can help you. So. Con. <clears throat> that was very beautiful. Con. And when you continue to do those things, it now has become an addiction. And now you're looking for that um that dopamine. I think that's the right term. I'm not really. You're looking for that high, that same high mm -hmm. that you had the first time when when you smoked, or you're looking for that same high that it brought you the last time when you got drunk, or wow. you know, it's that same high. I I do think it is. Uh, I I think that's the right word. Kind it is a dopamine is it's that chemical that's released. You know when something feels good. So mm -hmm. when you now all you do is turn a weed, all you do is turn. Even when you do have healthy coping mechanisms, that's why everything revolves back to you. How about Shamal Shah? Because if you're putting those, health, even if you, and everything is a balance. Even if you, um, you're not turning to weed, you're not turning to getting drunk, you're not turning to having sex and things like that. Even if you turn to stuff like sewing and stuff like, you know, different book or stuff like coloring. If you're putting that before the Most High, that's still idolatry. You're still going off, so you still have to turn to the Most High before anything, because now you're looking for that dopamine. Now you're addicted to it, and you're looking for that feel good feeling, and it could possibly interfere with relationships and all of that, because now you're addicted to it. And that's all you want to do. It's just feel right. good. I can't let it go. I just got to do it nonstop, nonstop, nonstop. No, sis, I gotta go sew this. I got, I gotta go sew. I gotta go sew. No, no, sis, I can't read with you. I gotta go sew. I, I had a stressed out day. I gotta go sew. I can't. Mm -mm, no, sis. I, like what? It's, it's a thing. It, and no, honestly, no it's matter a, what, it's a thin line. It's yeah. so scary how thin that line is. Yeah, it's crazy. As you really gotta. That's why the most has to be the foundation. He has to be because if he's not. Is you might as well go back to doing those other same coping mechanisms because you it's still addiction. But I wanted to read this um this article because Lily said it might help. So I'm just gonna read it. Okay. Um, I think I'm gonna read this one. Addiction as a coping mechanism and healthy alternatives. Um, y'all can see it? You can see it. Carter. Addiction is a brain disease that one out of every 12 American adults suffer from in 2014. There are many reasons why a person may turn to drugs or alcohol, including using these mind arching substances as a coping mechanism for stress, difficult situations, physical ailments, and other issues. Drugs and alcohol can provide a temporary respite from reality in everyday life. They can enhance pleasure and decrease inhibition, inhibitions and anxiety. Coping mechanisms are compulsions or habits formed over time that serve to help a person manage with particular situations or stress level. Not all coping me mechanisms are maladaptive mal or destructive. However, addiction is both. And I also want to touch on this because the article is about to say it. Addiction is and coping mechanisms. It's not just some people. They turn to shopping. Or they call it retail therapy. Some people turn to food, mm -hmm. emotional eating. Some people turn to, uh, it says right here, addiction can take many forms from addictions to drugs and alcohol to addictions to shopping, gambling, sex, internet use, eating, and other behaviors. So now you're addicted to your phone. Now you're addicted to uh, gambling, making bets. Now you're addicted to sex. Now you're addicted to eating sweets. You want a sugar high. You're addicted to all these different things. So it's a very thin line. You ha have to make sure the most high is the foundation. And you have to make sure that you're not addicted to anything um addiction is defined by the american society of addiction Med medicine as a brain disease 
indicated by cravings and inability to abstain from the behavior or substance. So now you crave it. You just can't stay away from it. Nah, I got to get this done. I got to go cook that meal. I got to go cook that meal. I got to go go so. I got to smoke this blunt. I got to smoke this blunt. I got to smoke this blunt. You just, it's it's a craving now. You like, you literally, you cannot abstain from it because you're immune to it now. You just, it's a demon. Tars. This uh, article um, I'm reading, they say, Almost anything can become an addiction, though, uh, from watching TV to exercise, computer use, work, or even socializing. While these may not immediately appear to be destructive on a very real level, they can encroach on your time and your attention and prevent you from living fully. That's real. It's just gross. That's real. And it's Girl, so it was breaking how, up. You said from TV to what? It says from watching TV to exercise, computer use, work, or even socializing. Mm. So you want to go that, out that, 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 that Sunday brunch? <laughs> Come on, that mm-hmm. brunch spirit. <laughs> that exercising. <laughs> now you buff. <laughs> Now you're the sister in a congregation known as the sister with the muscles. I, yeah. <laughs> oh, snap. That's not funny. That's crazy. Oh my gosh. Say it again. You said you what? It broke up. I'm so sick of this. Satan keeps it keeps messing up. Like you keep you've been breaking up the whole time. Aw. Anyways, it's okay. Look, it's okay. It's okay. Um, it's a thin line, y'all. I advocate for these things. I advocate for you to have healthy couple mechanisms, but Yahweh, Abba, Nava, our Father, Yahweh, Bahashimi, our Shah, has to be first in the foundation. Because if not, you're going to lose mm-hmm. sight of Him and you're going to crave those other things. And, I'm, and it gets real deep. That dopamine chemical, oh, it's going to have to get released. That feel-good feeling, you want that every time. You just can't shake that feeling. It feels too good to let go. It, and you kind of scared of what it might feel like if you do let it go. Mm-hmm. Because then you don't even know what to feel. You, you, you don't know what to fill that space with. And that's where it comes in to find the things that are well-pleasing to the Lord. But it says, um, I had read Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 17 and 18, but I'm going to read 19 and 20. These are the things that you could fill that that space with. It says, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making a melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for the things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Hamashiach Yahushai. So it's like when you are speaking those, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns, those are the things that are well pleasing unto the Lord. Those are the things that you you feel that you should have take pride and have joy in, um, you know, giving thanks to the Lord. Those are the things that should be really giving you that dopamine effect. Serving the Lord. Serving the Lord. I want us to read this real quick. It says, can you hear me? Car. Psychoactive substances interact in the brain, disrupting its chemical messages. Dopamine and serotonin, which are new narrow transmitters involved in feelings of pleasure, motivation, memory function, reward processing, movement, and learning abilities are often increased. For example, GABA, a sort of natural tranquilizer or its virtual opposite, Adrenaline may also be stimulated by drug abuse. Functions of the central nervous system like heart rate, blood pressure, body temperature, and respiration rates are also impacted by drug and alcohol use. Um, while with repeated drug or alcohol use, the brain becomes dependent on the substance to remain in balance. Mm. Drug may use may then become compulsive and individuals 
may lose their ability to control how much and how often they use them. In similar fashion, often other compulsive behaviors such as binge eating, shopping, gambling, sex, or video games can increase some of the pleasure-inducing brain chemicals that, the, that drug and alcohol do and lead to addiction with prolonged repetition. These behavioral addictions can then become tools for managing unhappiness and stress and may also be used as coping mechanisms cravings for the behavior can be intense and withdrawal can be difficult meaning that stress levels and unhappiness will increase if these compulsive behaviors are not repeated see that when we told y'all that when you get these quick fits and these highs it makes you feel worse they just said that when you continue to do that now you crave it and when you don't do it you just more stress you're more unhappy so it makes you feel worse because now your brain is dependent on it your brain depends on it now and then when you stop doing it, your brain going to be imbalanced, chemicals all messed up. This stuff gets deep. Mm. And I will say it's not it's not an easy thing. It's not a light matter. And don't think that just because you, you do get in, in a space where um, you find your healthy coping mechanisms and, you know, you are putting the most off, you still going to be tempted. You're still going to have things that might trigger you. You're still going to have things that, that make you might want to go back and, and to be that that old woman and do those old things. But, you know, through the healthy the healthy um, things that you have found to help you, those are the things that you go ahead and you source out and you, you, you stick to those. But, you know, Satan always going to come back around to, to test you and tempt you. So... Con, um, I'm in the book of Luke. I, I'm in the book of Luke, and you know, the gospels are repeated. It was basically that Matthew's four account repeated, and it said that the devil had left him for a season. So some spirits are going to leave you. Say so you might leave for a season, but he's gonna be right back. You know, Sirach two and one, it tells us, um, let me get it. It says, When you come to start the Lord, be prepared for temptation. My son, if I come to start the Lord, prepare ourselves for temptation. You're gonna be tempted. I've been tempted. Like, I'd be lying if I said I haven't. Satan has tempted me a millions of times to do the things that I used to in the world that would make me feel better. But I know that I can't. I know that's not well presented to the Lord. And that's really operates the most high because it was his strength that allowed me not to do it. Um, but I also oh, wanted God. to get um, I wanted to get this. Mark 2 and 21. Since we're talking about it. No man also saweth the piece of new cloth on an old garment, else the new piece that filleth it up taketh away from the old and the rent is made worse. And no man put of new one wine into old bottles else the new wine doth burst the bottles and the wine is spilled and the bottles will be marred but new wine must be put into new bottles old and new don't mix good and evil don't mix you gotta one or the other one or the other you can't say that you're trying to serve the most high the most high god yahweh in the name of his only begotten son yahweh shah who the world even he calls jesus christ you can't say this that's the path you're trying to take but you're still holding on to those old old unhealthy coping mechanisms you're still holding on to those old ways of thinking those old ways of talking the old ways of speaking you have to put that off of you and become a new woman created in yahweh which is in righteousness as ephesians 4 say so you got to kind of pick and choose what you're going to do in this thing you know you want to make sure that the most high is the forefront. He's the center that you're going to him most importantly, but have those coping mechanisms, but have it in a balance. Don't put that before the Lord because then you're going to be addicted to it. Now you're craving it. Now you can't let it go. Okay. And like the sister said, we want to get that dopamine and that happiness feeling from serving the Lord because the Lord has been too good to us. You know, we've got to find that joy in the midst of that storm. And that's something I'm so heavy on. Like we're not trying to minimize anything, but, it can be done through the spirit of the most high. Philippians 4, 13, we can do all things through Christ, right? All right. But we want to make sure that we can try to find the joy because we have so much to be thankful for. I don't want my sisters around here sad and depressed. We have so much to be thankful for. And like, I don't want to minimize it, but it always, it could be worse. It could be worse. I'm not trying to minimize it, but it could be. And, you know, this is just light affliction. Um, But I just want sisters to try to find that joy. Try to find what the most high is trying to teach you. Why are you going through this? What he's trying to show you? How is this helping you be better? But um, I'm going to on that. Sorry. So I had uh, Ecclesiasticus, which is in Apocrypha, also known as Tyrant, chapter 38 and verse 9 and 10. It says, my son, in thy sickness, be not negligent, but pray unto the Lord, and he will make thee whole. Leave off from sin and order thy thine hands are right and cleanse thine heart from all wickedness you know and knowing these precepts is really what helps y'all 
being in this word, and I'm not just saying know the precepts, actually applying the precepts as it talks about in James. Be you doers of the word and not hear, hearers only. You know, don't don't be that sister that you can say all the precepts, but when the time comes, you're not using them. You know, sometimes we have to really, you know, take a moment and some things I don't even talk to my sisters about. I just literally lean on the Lord because that's sometimes all I need to do. I don't be feeling like I need to take it all away and, oh, well, this and that. Some things I do. And if I feel like a sister can help me or something that's extremely heavy, that's what my sisters are there for because that's why I'm here for them too. But it's a, it's a pray to the Lord and he will make thee whole. You know what I mean? And then that's where the faith comes in as well. So a lot of us, we turn to these different coping mechanisms um, that are unhealthy because we don't have the faith that the Lord can bring us out of those situations. When the word tells us that all we have to do is have faith as the size of a mustard seed. Come on, y'all. Google a mustard seed. And then Google the the tree that comes out of a mustard seed. Y'all, that tree is so huge. Out of something so small. All you gotta have, it's so small. Y'all, this is how small a mustard seed is, y'all. No, go to the hands. Go to the hands. Go down a little bit. Oh, go down? It was, uh, it's right there too. Oh. See, look at that. Ooh, even my dirty hands. Uh, yeah, that's better right there. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that's how so small But yeah, is. look how little that is. That's so tiny, y'all. Let me bring out you. Um, look at the tree, though. Look at that tree. That is a mighty tree. The word tells us when we have faith, we can say mountain be removed. Okay? Mountain. I'm about to bring out uh, Hebrews 11 real quick because that that ultimately it says Hebrews 11 chapter 6 but without faith it is impossible to please him for he that cometh to Yahweh must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him and if you continue reading in Hebrews chapter 11, it, it shows you all the different accounts. As you read through the Bible, you read through the word, it shows you all these different accounts of those who had faith and how they were able to move out of those situations. Me and my, uh, my husband, we're reading in Genesis right now. And Joseph, the way he had to, when, when his uh, brothers put him in that pit, because they was upset, God called him, oh, he's the dreamer. You know, he had to have faith that the Most High was going to br bring him out. Of he didn't turn to, okay, well, well now I'm a slave. Now I got to do this. Now I got to And he, you know, I'm going to try to find a way to get drunk. I'm going to try a way to, you know. No. He had to have faith in the Most High. And the Most High made him almost like one of the top rulers. One of the top rulers in Egypt. Underneath the Pharaoh, underneath of Potiphar. So we got to have the same faith that the Most High. And even when he was there, y'all, after he got tried, you know, after he, he was doing a good job, he got tried. Um, the Pharaoh's wife tried to be with him. That was a temptation. Got thrown in a jail. That was a temptation. He wasn't in that jail for no, a couple of days. He was in there for a couple of years. Into the most high saw they fit for him to be in a position that he was high ranking. And guess what? Then he was able to help his family. He was able to feed them through the famine, through the seven years that uh, of um of famine. Hey, we gotta have that same type of faith. Susanna, she had to hold her peace and cry out to the Lord. We got to have that same type of faith so that the Most High can deliver us from whatever we're dealing with. Don't turn to these substances. These substances are not stronger, bigger, wiser. They they not more than the Most High. They not. They're just going to keep you at that lower state. They're going to keep you 
with more spirits coming back, coming back and coming back, leave for a season and come back and say, I'm going to go back into my house where I came from. They were so comfortable. This ain't your house. This the Lord's house, okay? You're the temple of the Most High. So let's act like it, okay? Come on. I had a precept. Go ahead. Mm. Mark 2 and 17, when Yahweh heard it, he said unto them, they that are whole have no need of the physician, but they that are sick, I came not to call the righteous, but send us to repentance. When we've been through so much trauma and so much pain, we're sick. When we're battling demons, we're sick. Um, and we've been through a lot as a nation. We need healing. So Yahweh he mm -hmm. came to heal us. That blunt ain't going to heal you. Yahweh Shai came to heal us. We have to turn to the most high and the name of his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai. So we can be healed so that we may be made new and have faith during it as well. I just want to bring that out and just want sisters to meditate on that. That's why that's part of the reason how was was here. He was here to heal us. He was here to make us whole with the words of life. That's the whole reason he was here to make us whole with the words of life, to wake us up and to heal us, to make us whole. So stop turning to this coping mechanism that's not going to heal you. Only the Lord is going to heal you because that's why how was here. He was here to call the sinners to repentance. So what he wants you to do is he wants you to come back to him so that he may restore you, so he may make you new, so he may cleanse you and make you whole. Because whatever you turn into ain't going to do it. You will not be healed. You will not be happy until you hunt and keep the forefront. Say that last part again. And there are that's that's just the most God mighty word to bring out because Satan is really being busy. Say that last part again. I said that um see Satan is busy. I said him heal us make return to do it again. I said said when I I'm so hurt. I'm so mad right now. Or this is breaking. I'm so yes, it's still breaking up. You didn't hear me? No. For Satan, bro. Oh my gosh, I, I can't know. see. What I said was, see hold on. The tempter. I had to what I said was, can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Go ahead, just keep going. Let me see. Go ahead. Basically, what I said was long story short. Mark 2 and 17. I'm gonna just say it all over again. Mark 2 and 17, and it says, I can't when Yahweh saw her, he said to them, they that are whole, the physician, but they that are sick, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. So the whole reason Christ was here, honestly, was to heal us. He was to give us the words of life. Can you hear me? Mm. Okay, you heard us grinning. <laughs> he was to give us the words of life. He was to, he came to heal us. We was, we was spiritually sick. When you're battling demons, when you're in darkness, when you've been through pain, you're spiritually sick. You know how much like he came here to heal us. So we have to turn to the most high and keep him the foundation, keep him in the forefront so that we may be made whole, so that we may be restored and made new. Because whatever coping mechanisms we're turning to isn't going to do it. You know, we have to turn to the most high because he's the only one that can do it. And a lot of times when we'll be going through it, we'll be missing something. We'll be missing the Lord. And that's why we've been in this, that's why we've been in these constant cycles of depression, anxiety, PTSD, trauma, constant cycles of getting high because you don't have the Lord. You haven't turned to the most high. So turn to the most high because he's the only one that's going to make us whole. He's the only one that's going to make us new. And we've been through a lot as a nation. We need healing as a nation. We are spiritually sick. We are brokenhearted as a nation. And we need the most high to heal us from our wounds. But there's only one that can be done. Only one way it can be done by humbling down and coming back to the most high. Every lesson we do, it revolves on going back to the most high. Every lesson we do. It revolves around coming back to see how about you Come on. That was mighty. I'm so glad you got that out because I really wanted to hear what you had to say. And Satan was really working. He was, because every time you started talking, it was like, uh, uh, uh. I'm like, all right, she really must got something real important to say because. <laughs> oh, first of all, I was like, yeah, it kept breaking up on my end too. I was like, oh my goodness, bro. 
Yeah. So, That's how it be when it be something real important for us to know or hear. Satan do not want you to have the keys to your healing. He don't want you to have the keys to seal up all the door cracks. He wanna he wanna have leave a little bit of space so he can get in. Like nah, bro, no. Nah. But yeah, this is real mighty. I, Lord willing, this is edifying for sisters, and y'all can meditate on this. And another thing I wanted to say, sisters, don't be hard on yourselves. Take it, be be gentle with yourself. Give yourself some grace. Some of these things we we didn't know before. Some of these things we're just learning how to do. Some of these things we're we're breaking generational curses. You might be the first one in your family to um, notice these things and go about healing and and growing from these things in a different way. So be gentle with yourself during this time period. Um, don't, don't try to think that you're going to have everything done in one day. Things take time. Plants take time to grow. Babies take time to grow in the womb. Businesses take time to grow. Uh, Rome wasn't built in a day. Just all all that. the things, you know, all the things that you know, be gentle with yourself, but be intentional when you're going about this. Have a plan. Make a plan. Plant your seed. Water it that the most high may give you the increase. So that's all I had to say. Because I, my, my sister told me this morning, she was like, yeah, but you be hard on yourself. I was like, damn, I do. And I didn't want to hear it. I was a little hurt. I, I, I got cut. But she gave me the, the medicine to heal it up, too. So, yeah. And pure. Come on. Well, Lord, was on this is edifying. Um, I'm praying y'all have a beautiful week. Set those weekly goals through the spirit. Write those things that you need to work on down. Passover is around the corner. So let's get in the mindset of Passover. Write those things down that you need to work on. Um, yes, I do. Girl, anyway, just goodbye. <laughs> no, I thought I was cream on my face or something. But um, write those things down and just take it one day at a time. One day at a time. I want this to meditate on this. Actually, I'm just going to read something that I wrote in the group chat last night, in the on my YouTube and stuff last night. I was watching this show, All American, and something they said made me think. I was like, dang. So let me get it real quick. What did I send? What does it say? Despair. Okay. Con compare and despair is a dangerous game. You're right where you need to be. When you don't need to be here anymore, you'll know. I was like, I said, dang, I said, hey, I needed to hear that. And so I, I took it like this. Stop comparing yourselves and be content where you are. I'm learning to enjoy the season I'm in and stop trying to rush out of it. I'm working on just trying to be thankful and know that wherever, whenever the Lord want me to have something else or be somewhere else, it'll happen in due time. Everything is done and it's season. Everything has an appropriate season. Maybe it's not just time yet. And that's OK. The Lord will grant you the desires of your heart in the right in the right time. But child, until then, enjoy where you at, or you're gonna be looking back having a spirit of regret, like dang, I should have did that. I should have been more content. Make the best out of whatever season you're in. Stop complaining. Don't worry. Be happy. And I wanted to sister Mary to tell on this. Luke 1 and 20. Behold, thou shalt be dumb and not able to speak until the day that these things shall be performed, because thou believest not my words, which shall be fulfilled in their season. So everything is going to be fulfilled in the right time, in the right season, when the Lord say in his timing. So just take it day by day, one step at a time, baby steps, and everything is going to fall together. Have make Take time in your healing process, you know, do what you got to do in righteousness to get your spirit right. Lean on to the most high, have those healthy coping mechanisms with a balance. Just keep the most out of first and keep the most out of first front and in due season, you'll reap if you don't faint. But you got to keep pushing to see that reward got to cross that finish line. You can't give up. You can't get a reward if you give up. So don't give up. No, no, I digress. Hopefully I have a beautiful week. And um, actually, I'm going to close it up with this. First Corinthians 1 and 8. First Corinthians 1 and 8. Who shall also confirm you unto the end that you may be blameless in the day of our Lord. You have shall have my shiak. So ultimately we're striving that we may be found blameless as possible in the day of the Lord. So let's get it right. We don't have forever in the day. You have shall come back any day now. We just don't know. You know, Matthew's tells us we don't know the time or the day. So we just want to give it our all and just really try our best in this thing and just have mercy unto yourself. Have mercy unto the ones around you. Love yourself and love, love those around you. Actually, I have one more thing to say. Sorry. It's I was doing a girl with you. I was doing a girl with Joe workout before the Sabbath and it was called a woman empowerment walk. Five tips for self-empowerment. Boost your self-esteem and boost the self-esteem of those around you. You know, compliment those around you. Um, number two, 
remove negativity in your thoughts. Have positive thoughts. Number three, tell others what you're going through. Share your struggle. Let's just know. Bear each other. Bear to do this thing. You know, it's heavy. Experience depression and anxiety. Know your worth and show appreciation to those in your life. Show your gratitude and show up for them as well. So kind. Show up for yourself. Show up for others. Love yourself and have a positive mindset. Oh. I digress. <laughs> Our person is gone. So, water for hanging out and with us. Laura Willem will be back in two weeks. Shalom, y'all. Shalom.